Greetings everyone, welcome to the Pillars of AI Application Libraries How to Install Tutorial. If you are interested in generative AI such as stable diffusion, such as large language models, web UI such as voice cloning, such as text to speech, image to image, text to image, text to video, video to video, image to video, and anything that includes AI, this tutorial will help you tremendously. This tutorial is prepared for regular users, not for programmers. Therefore, if you are not a programmer, if you are not an expert, watching and following this tutorial make your AI journey much more easier. I am going to show you how to install any Python version. I will install Python 3.10 and 11 and show you how to set your default Python version. I am going to show how to install Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compile tools. This installation will fix Microsoft Visual C++ 14 or greater is required error, such as the error that you are getting when you are installing raw op deep fake application or any other application that compiles its own wheel on your computer. I am going to show how to install and set up FFmpeg on your Windows so all of the applications that depends on FFmpeg will work without any issues such as Whisper or such as video animation AI applications. This installation will fix all of the errors that are related to FFmpeg. I will show how to install CUDA libraries. In some cases, CUDA libraries are also necessary for compiling, for installing AI applications, AI libraries. I will show how to install Git and Git Lodge, which is necessary, mandatory to clone and install open source repositories, GitHub repositories. I will show how to do Git checkout, Git pull, Git clone, Git stash, Git stash pop. These will be also very useful in your AI journey. If you are interested in AI, you really need to know these commands, what they do. I will show also advanced stuff such as generate your own virtual environment. And I will show how to activate already installed virtual environment and install or uninstall any library because sometimes you may be needed to install specific libraries to fix the errors. And by watching this tutorial, you will learn that as well. I will show how to have multiple Python versions, how to set your default Python version, how to generate a virtual environment or install any application with certain Python version. I suggest you to have single Python version, Python 3.10.11, but if it is necessary, because sometimes it is necessary to have multiple Python versions, after watching this tutorial, you will not have any issues. I will show how to install any application and set its environment path variable so you will be able to utilize all of the applications. I will show as an example Rampod CTL, which is used to transfer files between Rampod and your computer. So this file link will be in the description of the video and also in the comment section of the video. I will update this file if it be necessary. I am showing everything on a freshly installed Windows 10 virtual machine. So this is a clean installation and I will show everything on this machine. So you will not have any issues to follow this tutorial. So please watch this tutorial very carefully entirely and I am giving you guarantee that you will save huge amount of time that will be caused by the possible errors and mistakes that you will encounter in future. And just for this tutorial, I installed a fresh computer. So I will show everything on a fresh computer, none of the things previously installed, and this will make it easier to follow this tutorial. So let me first open a CMD. CMD is command line interface, command prompt. Usually we work with CMD when we are working with open source applications. When I type Python, you see there is no Python and it is opening this page, but do not install from this page. Installing from here will cause you problems in future. So no Python installed. When I type git, you see git is not installed. Let me also show you my environment path. Now environment path and variables is extremely important. Why? Because applications will look environment path to determine where the application is installed. By application, what I mean? I mean that, for example, the Python, where it is installed, or your CUDA libraries, where it is installed, 
or FFmpeg where it is installed. So you need to understand and learn how to edit system environment variables and edit path. I just typed E and V into my search bar and I am opening edit system environment variables. This is inside control panel. Then click this environment variables button here. And you see this is a fresh installation so there aren't any set environment variables let me show you the path variable this is where the applications by default looks and there is also system variables path as you are seeing right now it is also fully empty you just need to add applications to the path here i will show them in the tutorial okay so let's first begin with installing the python why python 3.x you may wonder because this is the most widely supported and best working python version right now so do not install python 11 3.11 or 3.12 you will have a lot of problems with the open source ai applications so to download it let's go to this link let me also make this full screen okay so this is the python 3.10.11 official version let's download windows installer 64 bit okay it is downloaded let's start it now follow here very carefully you see there is add python exe to path you need to select it so it will add it to our environment variables path also click customize installation select everything here next select everything here and also change this path install it directly into your c drive like this without any space character so do not install like this do not have any space character do not have any special english character so i will make it like this python 3. Point, actually python 3 10 11. okay let's click install it will ask me this okay let's click yes and just wait okay so the installation has been completed there is also this important question to us disable path length limit you should also click this it will disable the path length limit it is important and now when i start a new command line i type cmd into my search bar and click command prompt let me show you where i am typing it so you see i have search bar here when i type cmd here it is appearing like this so i start a command interface and now when i type python i see 3.10.11 why because it is looking into the system environment path so when i open my environment variables click environment variables and it is not inside this path inside user variables because this is specific to that user and we installed it for all of the users so it is inside this system variables path and it is added to the very top as you are seeing right now c python 3 10 11 scripts and c python 3 10 11. this is how the applications will find your python okay python installation has been completed now as a next step let's install git because git is necessary to clone ai repositories github repositories and install the stuff so click download for windows select it like this 64-bit git for windows setup start to download run the application from downloads click yes just click next 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 you don't need to change anything just click everything next and install because default git installation is sufficient for us to install ai applications okay now when i type cmd and when i type git you see git is installed okay nice then what should we install we need to install visual studio c++ compile tools and why this is extremely important i don't know have you seen my row of the deep fake tutorial it requires an inside face library and inside face library requires c++ tools let me demonstrate you so i do pip install inside face and let's see the error that we are going to get because we don't have the c++ tools installed yet it is installing all of the necessary packages as you are seeing right now and when it is compiling we get this error let me show you that so the error we got is microsoft visual c++ 14 or greater is required and that is why installation of inside face failed a lot of my youtube followers have got this error and they had hard time to fix this so let's go to the visual studio c++ compile tools open this link and in here scroll 
to down in here you will see visual studio tools from here go to the build tools for visual studio click download open in the downloads folder right click run as administrator click yes click continue then you will get this screen on this screen select this you see desktop development with c plus plus and you don't need to select anything else this is the latest version 17.8.3 and click install install while downloading so this is a big package but it will install everything that we need for us meanwhile downloading it may take a while depending on your internet speed and your hard drive speed okay the installation has been completed let's close this window it didn't even tell us to restart the windows now i want to test installation of inside face one more time let's open another cmd and do pip install inside face and let's see we will get any error or not we should not get any error also you need to open a new cmd after the installation new command line interface it is using the cached pip files okay it is building the wheel this is where it compiles itself and it compiled i think no errors so it uses the c plus plus tools that we have installed okay now it is running the setup.py file you can also disable this cache of the tools so i added another link here that shows the pip caching sometimes your cache may get corrupted so you may be needed to clear your cache when you open the link that i shared here you will see in the very bottom pip cache list pip cache list setup tools pip cache purge so this will clear your cache so the pip will redownload all of the cached files again you can also disable cache with this command so let's see the installation yes the inside phase has been installed without any error so the c++ tools installation fixed the major problem that you might encounter so when you encounter this problem microsoft visual c++ 14 or greater is required this is the thing that you need to install i also added a link for git large so ever if you need git large download it from here here, install it by default this will allow you to git clone large repositories like 5 gigabyte 10 gigabyte file saving repositories okay it is already installed now ffmpeg this is super important so when i open a cmd and type ffmpeg you see ffmpeg is not recognized so how am i going to install it click this link this is the latest version you can also manually find this link how open a new tab and type download ffmpeg you will go to its official website which is here when i click here click windows click windows builds by btbn in here you will see the latest link so this link is from there basically the ffmpeg is downloaded so i will extract it into the downloads folder okay let's extract like this i right click it and extract on windows 11 you may be look for more options so the extracted folder is here enter inside binary folder and copy all these three exe files or cut them move back into your c drive make a new folder as ffmpeg exes or whatever the name do not put any space character okay so this is my ffmpeg exe pad so when i click here i will ctrl c or right click and copy i will open the environment variables one more time click environment variables go to the path in system variables or user variables doesn't matter if you have multiple user accounts install it into the system variables path edit click new paste it alternatively you can also click new click browse and in here select its folder from c drive ffmpeg exe okay it is added okay by the way the system will look starting from top to the bottom so wherever it finds at the top it will use it if you have multiple python versions the very top will get used by default okay click okay click okay click okay after that open a new cmd command line and type ffmpeg and you see 
we got the latest version of ffmpeg by default installed into our system and it supports all of the libraries of ffmpeg this is the latest and biggest version of ffmpeg okay we got the ffmpeg 2 now time to install cuda libraries to download and install cuda libraries you need to register a free nvidia developer account let's click windows actually they changed it wow nice so let's click exe and download previously they were asking you to log in but looks like they changed it alternatively you can also download from this link that i have uploaded into hugging face repository so from either this link or from here you can download it okay so the download has been completed let's open the folder right click and run as administrator if you have multiple cuda installations the system may get confused about which one to use so i suggest you to uninstall previous ones and install whatever the version that you need you can also find other cuda versions very easily so all you need to do is type cuda toolkit and archive and it will allow you to look through all of the cuda versions as you are seeing right now you can download and install any version that is necessary but i suggest you to install and have cuda 11.8 version right now in future it may get changed but currently most of the ai libraries most of the ai applications are using this version but let's see it should still allow me to install so i click custom advanced click yes okay everything is selected click next this is where it will get installed by default c program files nvidia gpu computing toolkit cuda and version okay let's click everything and next all right the installation is starting okay the installation has been completed click next and close after that let's open the system environment variables one more time and let's see if there is anything new let's open the path and now you see the cuda is added into the very top of my system variables path so when any program looks for cuda toolkit cuda libraries it will look into these two folders and that is very nice okay it is set up we got the cuda installed we got the git installed and now it is time to learn about git checkout git pull git stash git stash pub so i will install automatic 1111 stable diffusion web ui let's type automatic 1111 web ui okay let's go to the repository let's copy its url and let's open back our c drive i suggest you to install directly into your any drive not install into documents pictures downloads wherever install into c d e g directly into any drive so let's open a new cmd in this drive so you see how i have opened the cmd inside this folder then type git clone copy paste the url and hit enter and it will clone the repository into your c drive enter inside it now i will start another cmd inside this drive so i open cmd here then now i am in this folder this is where your folder is currently located now i can do many operations for example let's do git checkout dev now we are into the development branch and what is it you may wonder currently there are 14 branches of automatic 11 web ui when you click branches you will see that when they were last time updated so the last time updated development branch was five days ago there is also gradio 4 branch test fp 8 branch and there is release candidate branch when i click the branch you will see that it is 468 commits ahead of the main branch so this branch has 468 improvements fixes over the main branch after i check it out this branch i can do git pull to verify it is latest version and it is latest version so this is how you update a branch let's return back to main branch so git checkout main okay there is no main branch so git checkout master sometimes people are preferring main sometimes they are preferring master so you see the master branch is the default branch now let's see the other ones git stash so when is git stash and git stash pop are useful to be it useful you need to have a repository that is updated and you have conflicting files 
to show you that I will do this. I will clone my repository. This is my own repository. By the way, you should also fork it, start it, open notifications. And if you sponsor me, I would appreciate it very much. So let's refresh this. Okay, let's copy it. Let's go back to our C drive and let's open a CMD. Type git clone and copy paste the URL. For copy pasting it, I right click. You can also alternatively right click here and paste from here. So let's clone it. Okay, it is getting cloned. And in this repository, I will change something. And then I will make an update to my repository and I will do git pull. Let me show you what I mean. So open it here. So this is how I open git pull. And you see, you see it says already up to date. Then I will change the readme file. Okay, for changing it, let's open it with notepad here. Okay. And in here, what should we change? Strategies. Okay, I will type it like this. Then I will make an update to my repository. Let me do update on my computer. Okay, I did an update to repository. Let's refresh it. So when I click this commits, you see it was just now. And I changed it to update readme file. I just added a new keyword here. Now when I say git pull, let's see what happens. Okay, it says that please commit your changes or stash them before you merge. Because there is a confliction of the files. The updated file and my modified file are conflicting this is when it is useful to have so what i'm going to do is i will do git stash and it will save my modified file then i will do git pull you see now it is updated the file is changed now when i open the readme file let's open it again with notepad you see my changes is gone and it is updated to latest version However, I want my modification to be back. So what I need to do is I will do git stage pop and it will return back my original file, modified readme md. So when I open back it, I will see that it is returned back to the, my version. So you see my OK word, which I have written here is back and nib is still here. So it pulled my change and merged it with the newest file as you are seeing right now. This is when it is useful. Okay, this is a complicated stuff, but sometimes you may be in need of that. Now, what else do we need? We have shown the git checkout, git pull, git clone, git stash. Okay, now time to how to activate a virtual environment, how to make a virtual environment, how to uninstall and install a specific library. So for installing stable diffusion automatic 11 web UI, I will double click and start web UI user.bat file and this file will automatically generate a virtual environment. So theoretically in your AI application, sometimes you may be needed to modify certain library. And in such cases, you need to update its generated virtual environment and make the changes. So how we are going to do that? Currently, it is downloading this Torque version into our virtual environment and it will install all of the libraries. After installation has been completed, I will change the installed Torque version. Currently, Automatic 11 Web UI installer is installing the Torch version 2.0.1. After the installation has been completed, I will activate the virtual environment folder and I will install the Torch version 2.1, the latest version. You will see how I am going to do it. Okay, the installation has been completed. Obviously, since this is a virtual machine and it is not a bare metal virtual machine, it is not able to access the GPU, but it is not important. Now, I will show how to activate virtual environment of Automatic 11 Web UI. It doesn't matter on any application that generates its own virtual environment. The procedure is same. So enter inside scripts. This is the folder where you need to start the CMD like this. Inside virtual environment, inside scripts, type activate. And now it is activated. Whatever the changes you make will only be effective in this virtual environment, not in any other of virtual environments or in your system-wide Python installation. So let's install the latest torque. I type PyTorque. Let's go to PyTorque website. And you see the latest version is 
0.1.1.1. So I copy this link and so first I will uninstall Torch, Torch Vision and Torch Audio. To do that pip uninstall Torch, Torch Vision and Torch Audio and then type dash dash yes and it will uninstall the currently installed Torch versions. Then I will first modify the copy it command like this and I will change the version to the specific version. If you want to see all of the versions type like this and then it will show you all of the available versions. Currently these are all the available versions as you are seeing right now. So let's install a specific version. These are all for CUDA 11.8. You see at the end it shows this is for CUDA 11.8. So which version we want to install? So let's install 2.1.0 and type and it will install the Torch 2.1.0 with GPU support. Why? Because we are providing an index URL. You see, this is why this Torch installation will have a GPU support. If you don't provide this index URL, it will install Torch only for CPU. It will not install it for GPU. So this index URL has to be provided for Torch to be installed with GPU support. Alternatively, let's say you want to install older version. So what you need to do, let's cancel this and let's return back to this and change the CUDA version like 11.3. Now it will list me CUDA version 11.3 compatible Torch versions. You see 1.11.0. By the way, this is also depending on your Python version. Some libraries will not be compatible with all of the Pythons. If you are not seeing a specific version that you need, then it is also meaning that your Python version is not compatible with your library version. Currently, the Python version of this virtual environment is 3.10.11. Okay. So how you can also compose a virtual environment. Let's open a folder inside here. Let's open a new CMD. So I will type Python dash M VNV and the folder name of VNV, VNV. Okay, it is now VNV and you see it is generated. This will be generated with your default Python. Let's say my default Python is 3.10.11. What if, if you want to have multiple Pythons? Okay, let's also download Python 3.11. You can't have multiple Pythons of same version like Python 3.10.5 or Python 3.10.7 but you can have multiple different major versions. So this is Python 3.11 and from here let's download the Windows installer. Okay, let's install it. I will not add it to the path so it will not conflict with my 3.10. Let's customize next. Okay, install everything. I am not adding it to the environment variables. This is important. Otherwise, I have to change the environment variable order. Okay, this is 10.11 like this. Okay, install. Okay, the installation has been completed. Let's open our environment variables from here. Let's look at the environment variables and we will not see that Python in our path. You see Python 3.11 is not here so when i type cmd and type python i should still get 3.10.11 not 3.11 so how can i utilize python 11 version enter inside python 11 right click the exe file while keep hitting the shift k and you see there is copy as path copy it and let's enter inside this folder type cmd this time i will copy paste the path of the specific python version like this you see it also has quotation mark and i will type dash m vnv and let's say 311 vnv like this or let's say vnv 311 and hit enter and it will generate a virtual environment based on this python version installation now let's move into nev folder for moving into folders type cd type vnv hit top and it will auto complete the name like this you see i am hitting the top key then move into the scripts type activate and let's type python dash dash version and you see the virtual environment python version is 3.11 or let's say just type python and now it is also 3.11 as you are seeing 
you can also change your default python version let's open the environment variables click environment variables click edit path and in here click new then click browse select the python 11 from here 3.11 then also click new and click browse and then go to the 311 and in here you need to select scripts okay you see now we have two of them let's move this to the up version like this this and this two and will it be okay will it be sufficient let's see python and no still 3.10 is default why because the order of the environment path variables matters so i edit i will move this to the very top like this then also move this to the very top like this okay click okay okay then open a new cmd you need to open a new one type python and now my main python my default python is 3.11 this is how you can set up multiple pythons this is how you can add modify change pad change your default applications this is also same for rampot ctl rampot ctl is the utility that we use for rampot if you are following my rampot tutorials you will know that so we need to first download the rampot ctl how am i going to do that so let's copy this let's open a new folder inside c let's say rampot ctl exe open a new cmd inside this folder copy paste the link okay there is no wget on the windows so we need to just download this file from here actually it will download a file like this okay let's say download suspicious file let's open it and i will cut it return back into the rampot ctl exe let's name it as rampot ctl dot exe like this let's open a new environment variable currently when i type cmd and type rampot ctl you see it is not recognized so i go to environment variables i go to path edit click new and click browse let's select the rampot ctl from here okay 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 let's open a new cmd and when i now type rampot ctl you see now it is by default so now i can use rampot ctl this is the logic of patting in windows this is super important to learn and understand i will update this file as it be necessary the link of this file will be in the description of the video and also in the comment section of the video i appreciate very much if you support me on patreon when you click this link you will see our patreon page i am sharing a lot of useful scripts here with guidance with written tutorials instructions you see i have 75 sharing we have over 3400 members but not all of them are paid members you can also join for free but if you join for free you will not see the subscription based scripts only the free ones you can buy me a coffee and support me i would appreciate that very much we have two supporters so far you can follow me on medium i am writing a lot of articles sharing super important stuff here you can follow me on civit ai i am writing a lot of articles on civit ai as well you can follow me on deviant art you should subscribe our channel you can follow me on linkedin i have over 3000 followers i am sharing a lot of useful information here as well you can also purchase our udemy course but i suggest you to become patreon member and follow our youtube channel that is better but if you don't have any other options you can purchase my udemy course and access the scripts there however patreon is most up-to-date way and you can follow me on twitter i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial hopefully much more amazing tutorials are coming and hopefully they will help you significantly for example i am going to make a tutorial for magic animate automatic installer and how to use it this tutorial was mandatory for that tutorial because you had to install c++ tools and ffmpeg this is why i recorded this tutorial previously but this is a major tutorial this tutorial will help you significantly if you are interested in ai overall thank you very much see you later hopefully